Founded in 1900 as the American School of Oriental Research, the Albright Institute of Archaeological Research is an academic oasis in the heart of Jerusalem. The school is named after the father of biblical archaeology, the late W. F. Albright of Johns Hopkins University. Its purpose today is the same purpose we had more than 97 years ago. That is to create a center in ancient Israel for American and today for other academics from all parts of the world to come and to do primary research in the history of the ancient peoples of, of Canaan, of the Israelites, of the Phoenicians, the Philistines, the Edomites, and the Moabites, and other ancient peoples of the uh, Middle East. This last fall, I was researching in Athens on my dissertation topic, which is an examination of how metallurgy is used in cult contexts. It's clear when you look at the Greek record. That Sandra the Westover, PhD candidate, DNA University DNA of Southern DNA California, DNA is this so year's Albright right. George A. Barton Fellow. Possible antecedents and, and analogies. And what I've learned is that we really cannot adequately study Greek religion and cult and iconography without looking to the Near East. The major purpose of the Albright is to provide a, an intellectual environment where all of these people can get together, whether they're Jews or Christians or Muslims, and to study in a very free atmosphere. In fact, today, the Albright is the only place in the Middle East where all of these people can get together from different ethnic groups, come from different countries around the world, and to study their subjects in ancient Near Eastern history or literature or archaeology or whatever, and to discuss openly and freely their research. Uh, this is one of the great advantages of the Albright Institute. Dr. James Phillips, professor of prehistory, University of Illinois at Chicago, and an Albright National Endowment for the Humanities Fellow. When we deal with the topic of agriculture, it's very, very important to understand that agriculture began in the Levant, specifically in Israel. Prior to around 12,000 years ago, or even 10,000 years ago, all people in the world were hunters and gatherers, and the only material they used was flint. So they had to develop a new technology once they began to settle down and use agriculture, a new technology in flint to be able to process the new food sources that they were using. In a way, I'm representing the Israel community of archaeologists, and the Albright is an extremely important focal point for meeting of Israeli archaeologists, American archaeologists, archaeologists of the foreign school, the German, the French, and maybe even those, and this is a new eth eth facet of Jordan, Palestinians, which uh, really formally could not have met. And I think that this framework, this very neutral and very important framework of the Albright is of great importance for uh, forging friendships, and intellectual understanding. To further this intellectual understanding, the Albright Institute conducts seminars as well as study tours involving more than 3,000 participants in which its fellows share their research with colleagues from the academic community. So my idea was is if I wanted to study about this period in Spain, about the Phoenicians in Spain, this period, I have to come to the Middle East to study the Phoenicians here. The atmosphere that the Institute provides the fellows is of a special kind. The Albright's building, an historical landmark, is one of Jerusalem's outstanding architectural examples from the period of the British Mandate. The director's house provides an unusually warm and gracious setting for the daily afternoon tea break. Two apartments and the hostel adjacent to the director's house provide comfortable accommodations for the Institute's fellows. Fifty fellows from all over the world stay here. They not only work together, but live together. There are several research areas at the Albright. The library, with its 27,000 volumes, is the most important one. 
The computerization of the library collection, funded by a national endowment for the Humanities Grant, will make the library available to scholars all over the world via the Internet. For fellows doing archaeological research, the three labs provide space for restoring and analyzing artifacts and quantifying pottery based on rim measurements. The lab is also used to analyze objects like this silver medallion with an Assyrian cultic motif. After restoration and analysis, artifacts are brought to the publications office, where pottery such as this Philistine cooking pot is drawn to scale. Data are computerized, building plans rechecked, and objects such as this four-horned altar are finalized for printing. The Albright also supports 26 American excavations. This mosaic comes from the Duke and Hebrew University's project at Sepphoris. Harvard's expedition at Ashkelon uncovered a Canaanite silver-coated bronze calf. Right. Students also participate in one of the Albright's most important excavations directed by professors Gittin and Dotan at the Philistine capital city of Ekron, one of the largest cities of the biblical period. Ekron, located at Tel Mikne, with its monumental buildings and huge industrial complex, demonstrates that the Philistines were a sophisticated and highly cultured people. Our most exciting find we uncovered in last season's excavation, and that is this stone, which is a royal dedicatory inscription that we found in a sanctuary in a temple, uh, which was in the largest monumental temple complex ever excavated uh, in ancient Israel. Now the inscription itself is just incredible. The only such inscription found in a secure datable context, the 603 BCE destruction of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. It has far-reaching implications for our understanding of the history of Ekron, the Philistines, and the last century of the biblical era. The inscription is unique. It mentions Ekron, providing an absolute identification with the biblical city and five of its rulers, two, Achish and Padi, are known as 7th century BCE kings from the Neo-Assyrian annals. The Albright Institute is uh, one of the great centers in the world for students and teachers, especially from America, who are interested in biblical archaeology and biblical history. Uh, there they can do a tremendous amount of research on the subject, both in the field and in the libraries in the company of some of the great uh, biblical historians and archaeologists, some of the greatest in the world. Um, usually uh, here at Harvard we send a number of graduate students working on dissertations related to biblical archaeology to the Albright Institute uh, to uh, conduct their research and to write their dissertations. It's a great center for that. We approach our 100th anniversary in the year 2000, and for more than four generations, the Albright Institute in Jerusalem has provided unique opportunities for young Americans in the fields of archaeology, ancient Near Eastern studies, biblical studies, and related fields. It's done so, first of all, for archaeologists, my own field, uh, in providing dig experience. Thousands of American students have gone on excavations that are affiliated with the Albright Institute. And finally, uh, the Albright is a major research institute in the Middle East with one of the best libraries anywhere. Um, it conducts field tours, archaeological tours all over the Middle East now. And finally, again, provides a center of collaboration for American, uh, European, and Israeli scholars. It is a unique institution, a venerable institution, and one that deserves all the support that we can give it. <laughs>